Hey everybody, my name is Alex. We are in the final video of our dedicated node, dedicated Smesher video, where we are smashing on one computer, then we are setting up a node on another, physically moving the hard drive that we put all the post data on to our node, and get our node up and running, and then get our uh, post data connected to our node, make sure everything syncs up, and we are good to go. So we're going to have to wait quite a while before we get rewards uh, just because it, it takes a bit of time after you connect the post data to get to the poet registration and then actually get to the point where you are receiving rewards. So we won't actually get, uh, you know, to the poet registration or anything like that. Uh, but Hey, we'll at least get our data set up and ready for poet registration. So again, I'm on Ubuntu Linux, uh, the server version. You could be on the desktop version. Just make sure you are on the latest version, 22.0.4 at the time of this recording. And also make sure you've updated your Linux instance. All right, let's get started here. I have, we can do LS. Actually, let's just drop out of this. Uh, I don't want to mess up the node here, so we'll do, I'm in my Tmux session from last video, so I literally finished that video a couple of minutes ago. We're just going to do Control B, D, and you can see we've detached from the node session. We're going to clear out all this stuff that we don't need, and I'm going to do LS, BLK, and that's going to list my devices here. And SDB is where I have my post data. I moved over this 465 gigabit, actually this is gigabytes, um, drive here. And what I want to do is get it mounted, but I also want to add it to my FS tab. That way it remounts automatically. I don't have to manually mount it each time. I have to turn off my nodes because I may end up having lots of nodes and I want these drives to just work. So we will start out by creating, let's just go back one folder. So we're in our home directory. And we will do make dir, uh, actually sudo, we got to do sudo, uh, make dir, make a directory in the media, and we're going to call it post data. Put in our password here, and if we do ls-l media, we can see we have our post data folder in here. That's going to be our mounting point for the hard drive that we just moved over, that SDB device. Next thing we're going to do is get the UUID for our device. So we do LS BLK, but we're going to do dash F and I'm going to grab, so SDB, that's the one I want. I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to put it to the side. We're going to need that for our FS tab file. And next thing we're going to do is sudo nano etc FS tab. And we already have some devices here that mount automatically. The next thing we're going to do is add in a new entry. So UUID, we're going to be using that UUID, control V to paste in the UUID. And, and basically this is a good way of doing it because every time you boot up, it's going to look for the device with this UUID and it's going to know exactly which one to mount. You can press tab. Then we're going to put in our mount point, post data, tab again, the file system type, ext4. We're going to do defaults. We're going to do zero and zero. I'm not going to get into exactly what all this means. Honestly, this is just a good setting for it. And we'll do control X, Y, enter to save. And the next thing we're going to do is actually reinitialize our FS tab. And to do that, we'll go sudo mount AV. And we can see we ignored this mount point. We already mounted our boot. But what we just set up, we successfully mounted. So if we want to verify, we could do sudo ls-l media post data, and boom, there are, is all of our post data set up and ready for us to start mining. Okay, this is the semi-confusing part. Uh, you can actually get the node going as is. Um, by using a few extra commands. I, have, I've, I haven't had perfect luck with this. First, let's stop the node because we need to change the config file. So tmux attach-t node. 
uh, we are going to go control B to get up to the top screen here. We're going to do control C and wait for that to stop. We're going to clear that out and we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it up. But what we're going to do is drop back out of it and we're going to do nano. Actually, let's get into our go space mesh directory nano dot. Uh, or actually, just nano config mainnet JSON. So this is the default config file that we downloaded. There's no smashing entries in here. What we're going to do is put them right after this logging. So do a comma and an enter. And then you're going to have to go to the description, copy and paste the smashing files here. And there's going to be a few things you're going to want to change. Uh, first off, you're going to put in the max file size that you used when you created the smashing data. So if you chose four gigabytes, you're going to want to bring in over that four gigabyte value over to here. And if you use two gigabytes, this will work fine. The provider, I'm using my CPU. And if you remember when we were looking at providers, there was zero for the GPU. And then there was this really long ID for the CPU. Because there's no GPU on this computer, I'm going to be using my CPU for the smashing. And it doesn't matter because the smashing is completed, right? It's just going to speed through the files and it's going to say, oh, you've completed your smashing. So it doesn't actually use your CPU, but we need to put a provider in there. And I don't have a GPU on my node. I want my node to be very low power. I want it to be bare bones. I've got the least amount of resources assigned to this as possible. Next thing is you're going to need to make sure you're using the right number of units. So that's whatever you used when you created that folder. I know for a fact that this is wrong. In fact, I'm 100% sure we used six because this is a 465 gigabyte drive and I know seven was too many. I think it was like 6.7 was like the max and we have to round down when we're doing the NEM units. Next, we have the proving ops. So if you've done a benchmark, you're going to want to do what was set up for your benchmark. I did a benchmark earlier. Four threads with 288 for my nonce is what I want. And I'll have a separate video for benchmarking. So you can check my channel. I'm sure it's going to be up soon uh, where you can actually do a benchmark. Worst case scenario, um, you can just kind of guess. 288 is, it basically means it's like the highest value I think that you could even put for a nonce, but the chances of you not getting it on the first round through is pretty low, but it does take a little bit longer. So you could lower this and you have less of a chance of finding a proof, but worst case is if you don't find a proof, it needs to run through again. So it's kind of a, there's a calculator online also I'll put it in the description, which can kind of give you an idea of what to put for your nonces and what to put for your threads. But for this computer, we're going to do 288 and 4, and we should be perfectly fine. Now from here, we can just control X, Y, enter to save our config. So now we've updated our config, and this is why we wanted to stop our node from running, because when we start this up again, we wanted to use the config file. Now. I've had bad luck with my node actually using the config file when I update it. If somebody knows why, maybe it's a bug, maybe it's not. But if somebody knows what I need to do to actually get my config file to load, or maybe it'll work this time and I'm just crazy, but let's just do tmux attach dash t node. And now what we're gonna do instead of what we did before, where we just ran the node without any sort of mining, we're going to do a, a command that's a little bit different here. We're actually gonna be adding in the coin base for where we want the rewards to go. And we're going to be adding in some flags to make sure we start smashing. So, get this loaded up here and some of this I'm going to end up deleting because it's in the config and I want to see if it's going to work without the config here so we now have a little bit longer of a command here I'm going to remove smashing ops max file size because I did put it in the config the provider we put it in the config num units we put it in the config 
Okay, this is the first one we want to keep. Dash dash smashing ops data dir. That's going to be where we mounted our post data. Then we're going to have the smashing. Uh, also, we have the flag for start smashing. And then we have the smashing coin base. That's where our rewards are going to be sent. I have a single wallet I'm pushing everything to. I don't want to manage, you know, 20 different wallets. So this is where my rewards are going to go to. And everything else should be the same. We're going to be using the SM data directory. We're going to be using the config file. Uh, everything else is the same. So let's see. I've been getting errors when I run this. That's basically saying that I have to use more than uh, two for my num units. Uh, oh, sorry. We got to run it as sudo. So actually, let's fix that. So this kind of annoys me, and I think I fixed it before. Uh, what we can do is actually change the ownership of the mounted directory. So let me just grab this. I need to add this, this to my instructions. But what we can do is sudo change ownership to the current user for media post data. Let's run that, and I think now we can actually do this perfect without having to do that. Okay, fingers crossed, I think the config file, file worked. We just gotta wait here and hope there's no, no issues. It looks like we might be doing it let's uh, remember those grp commands we had earlier we're gonna actually i see my cpu is pegged so that's always a good sign perfect so, okay so it looked like we're good we initialized um the post data we are now doing the post execution for the challenge poet so this is actually going to take me a minute uh last the last computer was, a, I had a 832 gigabyte, gigabyte file and it took me two hours. This one I have less cores. <laughs> you can see this just getting pegged right now, 100%. Um, that's normal. It's, it's going through to generate the challenge for the poet. So we're ready for registration. Let it run through. You can see it's calculating the proof of work and it's using those 288 nonces and those four threads. So you can see it's just slamming my CPU right now. This is actually just four threads of a 32 uh, core CPU. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and we're just going to let this run. I'm not going to keep you here uh, while I do this. So we'll come back when this is all set up. And then that way we can see what it looks like. All right, we are back in business here. I burned those CPU cores for a good, I don't know, 50 minutes or so. It looks like we went from, what was it? Uh, 317 to 357, so yeah, 40 minutes. Not bad, that was only about 384 gig gigabytes, so not a, earth-shattering amount of data, but we can see what happened here in the logs. We generated our proof, created the initial post, verifying the initial post, building the new ATX challenge, and we can see here from our event log in uh, from our grp, GRP curl query that we did earlier, we started post execution for the challenge for the challenge from poet we finished the post execution for challenge no needs to wait for poet registration window in current epoch to open once opened it will submit challenge and wait to tell poet round ends in publish epoch so basically what it's saying and you can see it down here we're currently in epoch 2 we won't get to participate until 3 um, and then this is uh, probably it looks like seconds the number of seconds. Let me get my uh, calculator out here. So, seven eight eight five two eight divided by sixty seconds is thirteen thousand minutes. Uh, so divide that by sixty. 
219 hours, divide that by 24, so nine, nine days, which is the 20th, and I think that is when the poet registration was expected, August 20th. So everything is lining up. I know you couldn't see my calculator math. I should have just pretended I did that in my head. Uh, but one thing actually I want to share while I have it up, uh, and I'm going to have to find it real quick, sorry. But I think this is really cool. We're going to take a look at what the system resources looked like. So here is my prox mock setup. I've got this node here that I set up earlier. CPU usage, we could just see it went basically to 100% for 40 minutes. This network traffic, I think this is just natural node uh, activity. We can see the usage went up super high. This is just the Linux cache. It does a weird thing with the RAM where it stores more than it needs to. It's still available. It didn't really use this much. If we looked at HTOP, I think it's only using like two gigabytes. And then this is the disk speed. So it's about 164. Now this is an NVMe, so we're must have been significantly limited by the CPU power during this time. But we can see that a little initialization with the CPU, then we went through the disk speed, and finally we finished. So that's what it looks like when you finish a uh, finished post data and you connect it to your node. So just to give you an idea, this is why you need a good CPU, and this is why you need good disk I.O. Because without that, I, I don't think the memory usage, even though we basically maxed it out, again, that's not that's not a real statistic. It, the way how it reports it from the VM is kind of erroneous, but it's actually correct, but it makes it look like it's worse than it is. You really only need about 8 gigabytes of RAM uh, for your node, especially if you're doing ghost-based mesh. Now, if you're running the the app you probably want 16 gigabytes um, but you know this this did fine I mean this node literally four CPU cores 8 gigabytes of memory 32 gigabytes for the boot disk um, and we can see in here we have our NVMe attached so if you're curious about how to set these up in Proxmox I'm gonna do a whole video where I go over setting up Ubuntu server you can even do desktop in here which is really cool uh, but stay tuned subscribe if you want to get a notification for when I post those videos and that's gonna conclude it we are good to go so let me just drop this back to here all we're doing right now is waiting for that registration and that's going to happen in nine days. So this node's just going to hang out, help participate in the network. Um, and, and that's really it. All right. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.